a Jack Daniel swilling pizza eating, dog hating, whore using, cocaine abusing, hairy back, big belly blowhard from New Jersey. The fat little bastard known as Artie Lang. Uh, can America hear me? That's the question. They can now. Oh, they can? Are we fired up? We're fired up. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a very special episode of uh, the Artie Quitter podcast. Uh, yeah, not with nobody. Um, it's just me and Dan Filato. A lot of people say they like that. The uh, the chemistry Dan and I have worked on so many years here to develop. A, but off the air, we've worked on it. On the air, we've worked on it. We've taken uh, uh, movement classes together. Is this because of my near death experience on Saturday? Yeah, well, we're gonna get to that. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. This, this will be a shorter podcast because is there music? On? Oh, that's something else. I thought I heard some music. Uh. Yeah. Oh my God! This Ingram chick is smoking hot. I'm, I got five. She doesn't do it for me. She, well, you're a fucking. You are a fruit. <laughs> Look at her, man. Uh, she's. This is. Is that Laura Ingram? Yeah. Laura Ingram reacts to Scalia's death. One of those Supreme Court judges died, and he was very right wing. And Fox News is treating it like the death of a Lincoln. Uh, and you see, the owner of the the spa said that they found him with the pillow on top of his head. Yeah. Yeah. What does uh, that mean? So. Well, that means that. It's good now. It's going to be a conspiracy. No, the left no, killed well, him. Well, it's not. No, it's not. Oh. No, no, no. Do you think they're no? They're, they no one said that yet. That's very. Oh, ridiculous. it's coming. It's not coming. Oh. That that come on. They're ridiculous. They didn't. Do that. They, they, it was clear. He probably wanted to relax. I put a pillow on top of my head all the time, <laughs> and I pretend it's 1978. <laughs> and I, I, I made. I pretend it's 1978, and that kid, uh, and that kid, Fat Joe. We used to call him Fat Joe. And the kid, Fat Joe. Uh, hasn't uh, offered me a, a lewd yet, and I said yes. And around not, yeah, yeah, maybe we no, not nineteen seventy nine ish, end of seventy nine, seventh grade. Fat Joe, who by the way in, in high school, Fat Joe got weak blow. <laughs> <laughs> That's with this chick. He dated this chick, uh, Yvonne, and she uh, she started dating a, a friend of uh, Fat Joe's. And there was a big rivalry because Yvonne was dating Fat Joe uh, and uh, and left Fat Joe for this kid. And uh, this kid was trying to, like, make Fat Joe look like an asshole to her. So, uh, you know, she said, let's get some blow. Like, 11th grade. I wasn't there. That wasn't that hit. <laughs> um, I was probably working on my swing, my uh, hand-eye coordination. That led to a 13 mole county nod. 85. That's right. It, it was worth it. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Dan is good at uh, <laughs> dead silence. <That's> right. <laughs> um, Dan, uh, very, very, a lot of comedic instincts. He knows that a, a comedian needs dead silence when he's operating. But, uh, yeah, so, and again, this is uh, a disparaging remark that probably came out of nowhere. And I always, when I heard this story, I said, no. I bet Fat Joe doesn't get weak blow. I bet it's just uh, the kid's name. Was, we'll call him Eddie. I think you know. I think Eddie's just trying to disparage Fat Joe to this chick. A chick came between them. She said, "You know, I want to get some coke for this party," and uh, she goes, "Let's let's get it from my ex boyfriend, Fat Joe." And Eddie goes, "Fat Joe gets weak blow." <laughs> That's what he said. With I mean, there were and there were. Thank God there were other people around because I think he was trying to sound cool. <laughs> and I don't think he realized that Fat Joe and Blow rhymed. He just said it really. It was a gut reaction. He said, Fat Joe gets weak blow. I mean, that could be a bumper sticker. You know, brilliance. God, the collection of losers. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, I think. So, oh, my God. Other than you, is there anyone else who went Why there for greatness? yelling? Oh, other than, sorry. <laughs> you do that a uh, lot. You, do, you, you, realize you, <laughs> you don't realize you're yelling? No. It's just funny. I mean, don't, don't look sad. <laughs> When I say that, they're like, oh. Is there anyone who split an atom at your high school? Speak up. Did anyone split? <laughs> I'm kidding. Split an atom? Or, you no, know, doctor or so-and-so? From... My one kid, uh, my one friend, uh, Peon Leon, Leon Palladino, <laughs> uh, he, 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 he's the kid who could fart a whole lot of love by Led Zeppelin. <laughs> Unbelievable. That, uh, the, dude, that was impressive. My, th this kid, Stats, he's dead now. I... <laughs> He died when we were 27. His name was Lutton. Uh, nickname was Lutton. 
Uh, last time I saw Lutton was, uh, okay, he died. We were 27 when he died. I went to the wake. Awful wake. Uh, but he was he was a dangerous kid, this kid. Lutton. Dangerous, like a tough kid. My buddy Joey Lazio got in trouble with him in the ninth grade, and you know he was the kid brought a knife in. Uh, Stats was mad at Joey Lazito, and he said, "I got this for your boy," <laughs> and he shows me a knife. Uh, he called me. I, I, you know, I, I, I hope I still have the not my ninth grade yearbook. I might have it in the other room from Kawami Junior. I saved it. The fuck this kid wrote in my yearbook, Scott Stats. He wrote, and I don't know why his nickname was Lutton, but he wrote. Art, you're a pretty radical dude. <laughs> and he spelt radical with a T. R A T. <laughs> oh, fucking great. <laughs> Art, you're a pretty radical dude. And then he just put Lutton. L U T T E N. I assume Lutton was spelled correctly. But yeah, you got so I saved Joey's life. I said, yeah, I wouldn't do that. Well, maybe I didn't. Joey was a tough kid. He might have. He was. He was a tough kid. He might have, uh, uh, you know, held his own against that. Um, but uh, I, I don't want to risk it because he's the kind of kid who would, you know, use a knife. And he, bring, he shows me a switchblade. And I go, dude, by the way, this is when we're supposed to take a test, the final exam we're talking about. <laughs> he goes, um, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to cut your boy. I said, well, what, 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 first of all, am I in an after school special? <laughs> I'm going to cut, you want to cut your boy. You want, I mean, dude, you eventually you're going to be doing 25 to life. You want to start that now? <laughs> Stay out a little while. And I go, nah, I, w- I wouldn't do that. He goes, why? He goes, well, and actually, thinking back, this might be true. It isn't true. I said, hey, Joey's old man, you know. I mean, do the math. What are you, stupid? <laughs> How naive are you? He goes, what do you mean? He goes, Joey's old man. He goes, what? He's in the garbage business. <laughs> yeah, which is not true. Mm. Uh, he is? I go, yeah, sure he is. Oh, really? Yeah. What does that mean? I go, what does that mean? If it were nowadays, I could say Google it. But back then, <laughs> ninth grade, I'm... I'm Thinking, I don't know, when The Godfather comes on in six months, try to watch it. <laughs> I go, you know who's in that business, man? The fella, you know, think about it. He, the, he goes, what do you mean? The, I go, you know, the fellas, friends of his, not ours. <laughs> what? Uh, can I spell it out for you, man? OC. Organized crime, OC. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Do these friends of his have guns? <laughs> I go, dude, I'm t- you know what I'm talking about, the M word. Then we don't... T- in this neighborhood, it doesn't exist, but it exists. Do you understand? If your friend from Indiana comes in, it don't exist. <laughs> Me and you, though. Come on. Yeah, he's a, guy. He's a connected guy. Garbage, dude. I go, I go uh, you know what? It, if one of your uh, uncles has uh, no job, tell him, to, tell him to make some money. Just go to Newark and open up his own <laughs> garbage collecting <Yeah>. business. <laughs> why, are you, why you can't do that? <laughs> No, you can't do that. Why? Because someone does it already. Who? This is ridiculous, this conversation. Now, did you fail the test because of this conversation? Well, can we edit out that question? But you saved the life. Uh, Well, can we stop? I haven't stopped. Please, the instincts on you. Yeah. uh, Oh, I guess. God, you broke up the flow. (laughs) Honestly, just don't talk until I look at you. Uh, I, I So I convinced Scott that, you know, Joey's father was in the mafia. And again, completely not true. It might be. I don't. I guess it's not. I guess anyone could be. So uh, he's he's all scared and he doesn't do anything. And he stopped. It's not, and actually, Joe was like, well, you know, Stets, I was ready for him. And uh, I said, how are we mean ready? How ready we take take karate class or something, and uh, nothing happened. I convinced Scott. I was really like he was that crazy. This kid, um, but like he would do something like that, and uh, that's the kind of school it was. Anyway, Scott, they they found him dead. We were twenty seven. He had a needle in his forehead. That's, that was that was a rumor. There was a needle in his forehead, uh, like a heroin needle, and he OD'd. But not about. I, I thought besides that, I mean. Funny kid, real funny, you know, just a you know, problem with the dope uh, when we were young. Um, anyway, the last thing that kid said to me was at a, at a bar. I saw him at a bar called Apples in Kenilworth, New Jersey. You don't have to sit there like an oil painting. 
<laughs> yeah, there's no other though. So uh, uh, I, 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 he was leaving the bar. He had a big scar down his forehead, like a real, like a scriggly looking scar. And I said, "What happened?" He, and he said, "I got into a car accident. I was visiting my friend in Las Vegas." And I said, "What? What? What's going on with everybody?" I, I, I just once I want to hear. Yeah, you know, I went to you know uh, UCLA and I I got a nice degree and I'm, I had more of a went, met a wonderful girl and we got a house and. The company I'm working for is great at Fortune 500. I got a nice suit and I'm going to a christening on, you know, I have plans Sunday. <laughs> Never. I got to a car accident in Vegas and I have a scriggly scar on my head. <laughs> this is what he said to me. He goes, hey, Artie, take care of yourself. He's leaving the bar. I go, all right, man, take care of yourself. He goes, Artie, come here. And he, he whispers, keep it white. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means. It's hilarious. I assume. I guess. I don't know what that means. Uh, don't date a black chick. Maybe I don't know. Or yeah, you know, I don't know. He's definitely the kind of kid who could have been, a, you know, brainwashed by the white supremacists. <laughs> Keep it white. I go all right. Whatever that means. I agree. I don't want to get into a conversation with him. I don't want to say what does that mean and then go outside and talk like at a seminar. And it was cold out. Next I heard he was gone. And I was in L.A. about two days later. I, I, it was right before I left for Los Angeles for Man TV. I had my own problems. But, uh, yeah, you know, that's why, I mean, a comedy really saved my life. It's, I mean, I, I mean, I have an affection for these kids. I do. I grew up with some of these kids. And not everybody's like that, but, you know, you ask anybody and split the atom. I think about these people who invented iPhones and apps. <laughs> I'm like, did anybody go to high school? Like, with anybody, like, Dan, did you know anybody in high school or anybody in your, in your neighborhood who could, who's doing this? Who's inventing an app? Who, you know, who does this? Who, who, who knows how to invent uh, Uber? Or you hit some, you know, who, I mean, nobody I went to high school with, nobody. I, I think there's another race, another race somewhere that I'm not in that, that <laughs> has people out there because there's nobody, uh, like the, the kids I went to high school with, there's nobody that, it, to me, there's nobody who could be in their same race who invents the uh, smartphone. <laughs> you know? <laughs> who does that? I mean, how big is Asia? Are they what? <laughs> All these kids? Because those companies got to recruit too, like the football teams. Just the way the Cowboys and the Giants recruit guys. Google, Apple, all these motherfuckers. Microsoft, they all go after these kids. They find out, go to MIT. Who's the number one nerd draft? The nerd draft. <laughs> they should fucking air that. We're looking at these f football players. We get it. Same thing. I mean, he does a 4140. Okay, we get it. Same guy. A defensive back in the NFL is cookie cutter. It comes out of a factory. It's the same dude. He might have dreads. He might not have dreads. <laughs> might have a tattoo on his neck. He might not have Might have eight kids. He might not have eight kids. Yeah, come on. It, the, 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 what we really should be watching is the nerd draft. Google takes uh, Ahmad <laughs> Deborter. He's here. He has no children. It's, it's so direct opposite. Like, you know, when these kids, this, these 21 <laughs> year old kids in the draft, they come up, they have eight kids already, and the wives, and, you know, the announcers for ESPN, like, uh, what Rich Eisen pretends pretend it's not racial. Well, there he is. There's, uh, there's Lavernius. <laughs> He's there. That's uh, that's his son. I believe that's his daughter. That's his other son. That's his other daughter. That's his my uh, mother of the son. That's the mother of the daughter. That's the mother. That's his mother. That's his mother's other husband. That's his other wife. That's his other daughter. That's Lavernius's other son. That's his daughter. Lavernius is twenty one years old, and he has a son who's in high school. This is great. The white defensive back gets up there. It's just him. It's even, <laughs> even his parents couldn't make it. <laughs> his, his father had was in work. Father can get out of his job. He's an engineer. <laughs> the nerd draft for Google. <laughs> All right. Uh, next up. Next up is, uh, let's see. Here's the uh, nerd. The nerd uh, commissioner. Sajid Kamban. Next up is MIT. <laughs> MIT takes out of uh, a private uh, uh, private high school in uh, Shintpat, Utah. <laughs> they take Bahim Kofida. Bahim is up here. No, he doesn't have baby mom. He's never gotten laid. <laughs> no one is. Not not only does not have children. No one has gotten laid yet. 
I assume they might tonight. <laughs> Let's hear his speech. <laughs> Thank you. I uh, am happy to be here. My, I have a grade point average of uh, 5.8 out of 4. 5.8. I did the extra credit. 1.8. I did that instead of getting laid. I got a 1.8. I built a robot. When I was 6, I built a <laughs> robot that actually uh, uh, get, took my mother's temperature. <laughs> I, when I was eight years old, I built a robot that went to the pharmacy. Mm. My dad was at work. Uh, so there was no time. My mother would get the flu. And I built a, a robot that took, went to the pharmacy and got a, a, a thermometer and some swabs, whatever it needed. It made a list first. Now, one robot made a list of what he needed. <laughs> then the other robot went to the pharmacy <laughs> and got all this stuff. Paid for it with credit. And a bank card, <laughs> swiped the card. He used the Samsung Pay card <laughs> on the phone, <laughs> on the smartphone, the way uh, uh, Hannibal Barris puts in the commercial. <laughs> Hannibal Barris, of course, a celebrity spokesman. <laughs> what? All right. Yeah, that's what I did. So, uh, so yeah. Again, let's go back to the uh, announcers. Yes, they've had their <laughs> eye on this kid a long time. Oh my God, a long time. <laughs> There's an Asian kid related to the comedian Margaret Cho. She's here. Very proud. <laughs> Margaret says a new joke, a new bit she does. She cut her hair short and she makes face and says she's like, she looks like Kim from Korea. Very funny bit. She's really killing. She wants to let everybody know that she tweeted out the comment about Hillary Clinton's uh, uh, gold uh, shirt. And she wants to let the entire sensitive com uh, community know she was not body judging. <laughs> Margaret was not body judging. It was about the shirt. She goes to the fashion police. Yeah, fashion police. Yeah. She just got out of the fashion police academy. She went with other, a bunch of other asshole uh, actresses in the fashion police academy. Congratulations to Google for getting Akshmab. He's getting right to work on a new app. <laughs> yes. The comedian Artie Lang tweeted as a joke uh, about uh, based on Uber and Grindr about an app called Clugger, which uh, lets you know if someone uh, within 25 feet of you wants to talk about the career of actor Jack Klugman. <laughs> it's called Clugger. Now, we like this idea. We bought it from Artie. He doesn't know it, but we did. We call Rich Super. <laughs> Rich's agent, apparently. And we make the deal, and so this is what this Akbar's going to work on, that app, Clagger. <laughs> he's young, but he's, we, he's got every odd couple <laughs> episodes that we could find, and a bunch of Quincy's. Go, Cl do, 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 give to America. He's watching Quincy by the by the bushel fiddle. We downloaded Quincy and uh, 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 the couple, and this the movie Twelve Angry Men. Everything with Klugman, Klugger. He's running an app. Yes, you hit it and you talk to anyone who knows about Jack Klugman. Very very fun. <laughs> and uh, then of course, it, 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 for any a person who is a black fan <laughs> of Klugger. We have Kligger. <laughs> Actually, Akman uh, from this generation, he want, click, it's Kligger. <laughs> He's making it Kligger. <coughs> He's from this generation. He doesn't like the er in the Kligger. <laughs> Finds it offensive. So Kligger for black Jack Klugman fans. I admit, not the big group. African-American Kligger. For homosexual Jack Klugman fans, <laughs> he's also, you know, he may need another person for this. Very busy. Because he's getting right on this, you know. Starting salary of 14000 a week. <laughs> he's going to work for, for, for the uh, gay Jack Klugman fans. If, if a gay person who wants to talk about the career of Jack Klugman <laughs> is within 25 feet of you, you put on Clogger. <laughs> Clogger. <laughs> and uh, what is the question is that 
because they might wear clogs. <laughs> That's good, but no. <laughs> With the clogger refers to something else. <laughs> Think about it. I'm not saying it out loud. Very offensive. So Kligger is the black, so it's Kligger. We agree with you, Ahmad, very, very sensitive. <laughs> Ahmad's in a safe place. Ahmad uh, at MIT, who led the movement for Black Lives Matter. <laughs> and uh, they all went to the safe place. In the same place as MIT where they all could work on their uh, uh, projects. Unfortunately, the, there was a glitch in the robot he invented at the age of six. Uh, the, 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 it's a very, again, he's been in therapy and it, uh, a very, very bad thing happened. He, he hooked it up wrong and apparently it uh, it killed his mother. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, there was an investigation for years. They thought the father killed the mother. He had no good... Uh, Alibi, and he did have problems with the mother. But supposedly the uh, robot went crazy when <laughs> he had to go back to the pharmacy late that <laughs> night because she forgot something. He came back and killed the bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so he's gotten over that. He shows no emotion at all. He sits there like Dan uh, Flat. <laughs> Welcome. That's the number one draft <laughs> of the nerd draft. And uh, there goes, next up on the clock, Microsoft. <laughs> Microsoft is next on the clock for the nerd draft. Very exciting. <laughs> we go to commercial now. Uh, a lot of the people here, uh, the, the kids are busy <laughs> illegally downloading the RZ Quitter podcast. <laughs> <laughs> They're showing their parents. <laughs> That is very big in the uh, Indian community. <laughs> How we get our Tiquitter podcast? <laughs> Ahmad is just a, it's like nothing for Ahmad. It's very, very, uh, he can do it in his sleep. <laughs> oh, come here, give me that. <laughs> oh, 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 who's this blue sun media? <laughs> <laughs> My gracious. They know nothing. I don't know why my accent is Swedish, Spanish, and sometimes <laughs> Indian. I don't know that. I'm working on it. Stop talking, sir. You sound a little flimsy. A little light. Go on, clogger. Oh, there he is. Kanye West. He's our first guy on the clicker. We signed a big deal with Kanye. Apparently, he has uh, $53 million in debt. <laughs> That's what happens when you uh, uh, every once in a while your eyes are diamond blue. <laughs> blue, blue contact lenses made of diamonds. <laughs> you got to snipe. Very very nice. And the third draft pick for no reason, Antonio Cromartie. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently he's a great. He's also good with the computer. <laughs> Antonio is working on an app. If you hit it. <laughs> It lets you know if a fertile woman is there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <clears throat> That's right. <laughs> the name of this app is Ovulator. <laughs> Ovulator. It lets you know if, if you're a defensive back and you want to spread your seed around. The this, Ovulator. The Ovulator. Go on Ovulator. <laughs> I'm an ovulator. There's a woman who wants to have, who can have a baby within 25 feet of me. <laughs> and Cromarty has used that quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, he, has a, he has a giant family. <laughs> he also has a jet family. He has a charger family. He has a bear's family. <laughs> he has a dolphin's family. <laughs> ovulator! <laughs> the nerd NFL. You know, uh, our nerd commissioner is actually more vocal and more <laughs> animated than Roger Goodell. Several people mistook Roger Goodell for a painting today. <laughs> and of course, the Dan Patrick show is here covering this. Uh, he's, the Dan Patrick skits that he does are very big in the Indian community. Uh, 
we always look at the sketchy <laughs> did uh, uh, the takeoff of Hoosiers. <laughs> oh my God, that's so funny. I believe Chris Long wrote that. <laughs> uh, very big. He's here covering the Nerd NFL. <laughs> and uh, we welcome him. He's a very funny man. You ever see his uh, on Letterman? <laughs> oh, God, the rapport. Oh, the rapport. <laughs> I'm hoping he's getting on James Corden. <laughs> James Corden, by the way, for no reason at all, was on Clogger. <laughs> him and Lindsey Graham. <laughs> but I, I should stop doing this because I, I probably could, okay. I, you know, again, this is what's wrong with the podcast, too. There's no one to tell me to stop doing this. <laughs> <laughs> on Howard, this would be like a one minute thing. <laughs> you not even, you get bored of it. I love Dan, I respect him, but he, I probably wouldn't listen to him if you told me to stop. <laughs> And no one's here to call and say, stop. You know? <laughs> I guess Rick from L.A. is probably, I mean, I guess they could turn off the pod. I mean, who's listening? I, I, I realize, I, you know, I'm just one, I'm one inch away with this microphone but just talking to nobody. I, for this, I, mean, I might be. I, I don't feel, is anybody out there? Hello? All right, now there's some information about the crucifixion. How many times, you know, again, I'm out of that character. Thank you. Uh, Dan, send that over to the Peabody's. What is the, uh, how many times are they going to go to this well? Risen, the new, again, every fucking, after Ash Wednesday, you see it. There's a new movie about, uh, you know, the, the fucking the, the Palm Sunday, the, the Easter, the Easter. There's a new movie about it. The Killing of Christ, blah, blah, blah. Passion of the Christ, you thought would be the end all. It's not. Yeah, I mean, Mel Gibson, what did he put in his pocket for that? Mm -hmm. That's a fuck you, Hollywood. Mel, can you imagine that? I mean, look, Anthony Cumia, who's a friend. You know, he's become a friend. Some charges are pending, but uh, a good guy, Anthony, whatever. And uh, I like, I like, you know, whatever. I like everybody involved in the story. But it, it, Anthony uh, is really, it's its cool. He's kind of saying fuck you to showbiz because he said some things. They got mad at him, got kicked out of Sirius. And Sirius is still a corporation. Opie went on with, you know, Jim Norton. Of course, oh, Opie and Jim, two amazing guys. You got Jim on there. It's going to be funny. And they're doing a good show. And, and in the old days, Anthony, Kumi be hung out to dry. I can't. But now with this technology, this podcast starts a podcast. And I think after all the uh, militia signed up, he's making $4,000 a minute. <laughs> You know, I, I did the show. I mean, Anthony, he's an entertaining guy, Anthony. Talented guy, funny, a likable guy, well, you know, guy's guy. You can see where people want to listen to him, and a lot of people signed up. So, you know, it's an odd time. You just, you, if you have somewhat of a backing, you, you fire this up, and that's it. I had just enough people because of the stern days to where I said, okay, I'll, I'll sign it up and see what happens with the pay by month model. The pay by month model used to look a little like Bar Raffaele. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. The pay by month model has put a couple on. <laughs> yeah, not quite attractive. I just did a bit about Jack Klugman having an app. <laughs> Again, that's what I did. That that, that people say, what do you get to do on the on the podcast? I just did 30 minutes on a, an Indian guy talking about a Jack Klugman app. What are you doing that? Nowhere. I'm, I'll probably be doing it nowhere soon. <laughs> but in my shower. That's, I mean, that's fucking great. That's America, right? Uh, you know, Stern Show. But, you know, I, it was a great, great time. I, you know, I, I was still regiment. You still work for a corporation. I was making 900 grand a year to do that. Uh, right here is the same thing. I, I, I can do whatever I want. Uh, except, well, actually, it's not. It's not nine hundred grand. Well, it's a, it's a little less. Yes, we're doing the math on. It's a lot less. Of course, I think I, I have a big offer uh, to do this uh, brand of comedy somewhere else. We're in negotiations now about some of the creative. Yeah, that's what people want. They want. They hear this. They like it. Apparently, I am the, the absolute bell of the ball on Reddit. And uh, you get a, they, they gave me a, you know, a, a nice offer to do a show somewhere. And uh, 
I'm mulling over, but they do want they want it to be they they, they appreciate the lack of censorship and bits like this. But they, <laughs> they do want it to be you know a little more mainstream the humor. Like I think the note would be instead of Jack Klugman, <laughs> could you do with them? You know, I don't know. <laughs> Could you make it? Pure? The Matthew Perry odd right. couple. Well, no, he's even too old now. It would be like, uh, instead of uh, the Jack Clark, could you make it Bruno Mars? <laughs> he is? You're on Bruner. <laughs> okay, Bruno Mars was dancing on the Super Bowl. I can't even tell you. I, I, I Honestly, I'm wait, I, I, after watching that, I, I'm waiting for blood work. <laughs> Honestly, I'm waiting for blood work. I'm just, I mean, I'm just seeing how many T cells I have. <laughs> Gee, oh, what was he doing at that leather outfit? He's prancing around. It's like that in Annie Hall. It makes you want to throw up. This <laughs> scene in Annie Hall with Woody Allen, you know, narrating his his life. <laughs> And uh, he's like a young kid trying to, a comedian. He gets a job writing jokes for comics that this low level manager represents. And this is like this vaudeville guy, this older guy explaining his act to Woody Allen. Yeah, kid, you know, I come out and I do a French accent <laughs> and I put, you know, I get to press something. Oh, oui, I do it. And Woody Allen's got a fake smile plashed into his face, looking at the guy in horror. It's so perfect. You know, and, I, and then you hear Woody Allen's voice go, go look at this guy. Dancing all around, thinks he's cute, makes you want to throw up. That that's what I thought. That voice was what I thought when I watched Bruno Mars. On. Can you write something like that, kid? Yeah, can you? Yeah. Can you? Can you? Uh, that's what I thought of when Bruno Mars was dancing. Uh, look at this guy, leather jacket, dancing around, makes you want to throw up. What are they doing? It it's all the same fucking song. Katy Perry, I know Dan loves her, but it's like, it, it, here's the song. <laughs> <laughs> it, you got the Beyonce dancing around. Everybody's afraid to fucking crack on Beyonce. <sighs> Come on. She's taking over the world. Bed, bath, and Beyonce. <laughs> That's my new thing. <laughs> I'm going to pitch those as a story. I'm, gonna, I'm trying to get in touch with her. <laughs> the email will be, uh, you know, subject... Make James Z richer. <laughs> hey, J A Z. Don't know if you know me, fellow entertainer. Yeah, <laughs> sorry at the Forty Dudes Club. Great job. Listen, got an idea for the for the missus. Get back to me, your ledger man. No pressure, but uh, look, I know uh, I know you got other stuff going on, but uh, you want to put a, you want to I don't know you want to put a quick sixty grand in your pocket. <laughs> By the way, it's totally your cut. I figured it out. After everything, 60 G's is you. <laughs> and now we can talk back end. Basically, a competitive... Uh, I'm, to, I'm thinking about... We need a guy like you to come in the marketing. A competitive uh, sort of uh, a toiletry store. You know, it's got everything with, the, you know, the, with these broad Jews. You know what I'm saying? Shampoos, oils and shit. You know, pink towels, all that shit. But... Uh, loofahs. Yeah, loofahs and shit. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, but, but with a hip-hop... Uh, sort of uh, turn on it. Hello, I think that the, the, Wait, I'm sorry, Jay. <laughs> Your answer machine. Damn it, his answer machine. That always happens. Let me scroll back. In the middle of the pitch, I was ramping it up, and Jay Z's. Damn it, <laughs> he got a call from Nas. I guess. Jay Z, Darty again. Listen, yeah, I got cut off there. All right, listen. Uh, real quick, I'll be quick, you know, so yeah, so it's toiletries, I'm sure you're wondering, it's, uh, I don't know, you know, it could be like a bungee cord for certain uh, around the house stuff, uh, you know, uh, Lysol type shit, I don't know what they use now, you know, those, uh, the shampoo with BT, and Jay, <laughs> damn it, fucker, I think Blue Ivy's playing with the phone, yeah, <laughs> damn it, I'm cool. I mean, that's it's very awkward. So I, I, I try to sound cool for he's a rapper, so I feel very insecure. The fucking is terrible. 
Jay Hardy, hey, Jay Hardy again. Real quick, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be quick. I listen. Okay, so you know, you get the idea. Body wash, uh, you know, the, the, the shampoo with beads in it, the pink towels, all that stuff, okay? Listen, here's the name of it. And this is where you kind of, it's, it's branding, you know? It's a branding thing. You got to bring like, a lawyer in on it. I don't know. I don't know. You, you involve Russell Simmons? I don't know. So you just, uh, you got to pitch it to them. But this is the big, this is the pitch. It's all in the marketing. Uh, and uh, you got to get the, you know, you miss the missus in on it. Uh, you're talking one day of shooting. All right. The name is Ben. Be- Beep. Fuck. Fuck. Oh, oh my God. He must think I. Oh, I sound so fucking terrible. Not cool, guys. And I have to finish it. This is terrible. He's like, he's not going to have time for this. He's not going to have time for He's going to shoot a video. You got to be quick with this shit. All right. This is his moments like this that define life. This could have went better. Z Yardy, Bed Bath and Beyonce, Bed Bath, just, Bed Bath and Beyonce. That's all I'm gonna say. Just it, think of that and add it to what I just said. In the lip, beep, fucker. I'm not going back. You got the Bed Bath and Beyonce. It's clear. Fucking home run, home run, baby. You know I just gotta make sure. Did you get the other ship that? I didn't say beyond. Bed, bed, Beyonce, 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 Be fuck out! We're working on a new entering machine that lets you leave message for Jay Z much longer. We like Bed, bed, Beyonce. <laughs> God, watch him, Fox News. I know I'm getting older, man. I watch, cause the broads are unbelievably hot, but you know, old people watch this fucking thing. Every you go from a smoking hot young chick. Every commercial, <laughs> every commercial. There. Let me tell you something. You want to start a business? Go into the fucking type of insulin business. There are forty seven thousand different insulin companies, and they all advertise on Fox News. It's either it's either gold bomb medicated powder for uh, nerve damage to your feet from diabetes. It's either it's that it's either that or it's uh, dark urine from diabetes. It's either that or it's uh, your neck hurts from diabetes. It's that or your are you, is your you have blurred vision from diabetes. Ah, there you go, uh, Crestor, Lentor, Lantis, Pantis, Frantis. It works with a, a, a diabolic steroid. It's the same old couple walking. It looks like a Barbara and George Bush. They're walking. <laughs> and then the woman goes, I, now that I'm Atlantis, I've, I'm back in the game. <laughs> and then we get to the, the, big, the big fucking finale. The finale of all these commercials. The side effects. <laughs> that is the Rosalita. The side effects are the Rosalita of all these fucking commercials. <laughs> Like, if you're watching, if, if a diabetes commercial is in concert, <laughs> say you're at a concert that's a diabetes commercial. You see Atlantis in concert. <laughs> Let down, Joe! It tells all the things. It tells you what's right. It tells you what it can do for you in happy times. And then it leaves the stage. It goes dark. And you're like, <laughs> the, the people who don't know it, they start to leave. Like, no, dude, they didn't do the side effects yet. <laughs> they didn't do the side effects yet. We can't leave. I know you want to beat traffic. But have you ever seen the side effects? No, come on, not live. <laughs> You ever see side effects live? No. Lantis comes back out. <laughs> Fucking Lantis. Are you ready? Are you ready, Boston? Some people have reported. <laughs> Say it again. The crowd says, Some people have reported. <laughs> Bloody stool. <clears throat> <laughs> High blood pressure, bloody stool, blurry vision. <laughs> blurry vision! <laughs> that like Springsteen or Dylan with those songs with too many words and it's like blinded by the light, they just ramble it off. <laughs> blurry vision! Blurry vision. Blurry vision. <laughs> Insomnia. Sweating. Sweating's a big one. Sweating. <laughs> Yeah, print the mat. See if you Tremors. Print, print the mat. Yeah, okay. yeah. Print it all out. I'll do the, I'll do the side effects. <laughs> First of all, it, it, they, they, I guess, you know, one person says like they feel like this. Another person says they feel like this. Totally opposite, but they have to report it because technically two people in the focus group 
And so you hear about diarrhea, constipation. <laughs> what is it? Diarrhea, constipation. Sweating, not sweating. You feel hot. You feel cold. You feel like you don't want to go outside. You feel like you want to go outside. You feel like you want to call your friend. You don't want to call your friend. You feel sensitive, suicidal. They're all suicidal. <laughs> suicidal. People were, some people, ears started bleeding. <laughs> bloody ears, bloody stool, bloody nose. Some people feel like they don't want to go up and shave. Some people for three days didn't feel like shaving. <laughs> Depression, suicidal tendencies. Excitement, happiness. Every one of them. And then okay, the, the, that that's it. That that's that's half of that's half of their that's half of their booking book there, in, in the advertising department of Fox News. The other half catheters. <laughs> oh, and I can't even look at it. I, uh, the, 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 there's new types of catheters. Oh, and you got a people. A guy looks at you like you know, a, a guy looks like you know, uh, you know, Tom Coughlin. <laughs> I'm Tom Coughlin, the ex New York Giant. And uh, yeah, I use catheters. <laughs> Have for the longest time. And the catheters nowadays are not what they used to be. Not painful. They show an old catheter. It literally it looks like a wooden back scratcher. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, and we got people shoving this fucking their fucking cock. It, a piece of driftwood. That's the old catheter with splinters. And the new one looks like you know the 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 thing the dentist puts in your mouth and like to make the put to put water keeps your mouth moist. It looks I mean you know again, it looks comfortable, but you realize what's happening. You're shoving it in your dick. You're shoving it in your dick. That's the finale. So it's uh, that's Fox News. They go from a smoking hot blonde talking about ISIS and how shitty Barack Obama is. <laughs> that's all. The, Every kind of, I mean, like I'm a fan. I watch it, but I watch CNN too. But uh, yeah, that Chris Cuomo pontificates. Uh, well, I, these is, I want a list of the side effects. It's this, right where I circled. Common side effect. Oh, is, is that a list? <laughs> yeah. You circled something here. Oh, okay, jeez, I'm losing my fucking. Uh, yeah. Do the side effects and the whole crowd, side effects, side effects. The finale is side effects. You've heard what Lantis does. You've heard what it costs. You've heard what insurance it takes. You've seen the people who use it. You've seen the new carrying case. Convenient carrying case. And now we see this. What's everybody? Lantis walks back out. What's up, everybody? I'm Lantis. Lantus! 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 Are you ready? <laughs> the guitar player goes into the intro for side effects. Common side effects of Lantus include. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish there was a camera in What do they include? <laughs> include! What do they include? <laughs> He's doing Lantis and the audience, folks. <laughs> I have it right here. I have what they include. <laughs> right the fuck. <laughs> Let's hear it, Minneapolis. <laughs> Minneapolis, do you want to hear the Lantis side effects? <laughs> <laughs> the radio station for old people are here. <laughs> Greta Van Susteren's ah, 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 ah. Include Pain, redness, <laughs> swelling, of itch, swelling or itching at injection site Hypoglycemia, low blood sugar Again, they didn't give me what I wanted <laughs> I mean, We need just a list where I just list them because not <laughs> Hunger, weakness, sweating, tremors Irritability Irritability! Ah! Who is it? Who's irritable here? Ah, from Lantus. <laughs> Trouble concentrating, rapid breathing, fast heartbeat, fainting, seizure, severe hypoglycemia can be fatal. Bloody ears, bloody nose, sweaty, diarrhea, constipation, old age, young age. Okay, well, we're going to get. Uh, Dan gave me the direct opposite of what I asked for. I, I, I just, we'll get, you know, we'll. 
I, I need a full. I don't know. I need a full list of them. Well, you get it. You get the bit. A full, like a full list where I can rattle them off. Would have been perfect. We don't have that. Uh, yeah. So that, that, that is catheters. Oh, that fucking grotesque. I don't care what a catheter looks like. You're concentrating on the wrong area. D- don't try to make it look good and comfortable. Okay, you're wasting your time with the your, your first draft with the nerd draft. You, you know, Lantis. You drafted the guys of the nerd draft. Don't make it look better. I don't care about the packaging. What you got to work on is a, a cure for ever needing a catheter. The thing that makes me not need it. That's my problem. The fact that I, I, <laughs> something I have to fucking stick in my dick exists. Oh, God. Oh. For, the, for the love of Christ. <laughs> so yeah, then Lantis ends with um, yeah, this, uh, he ends with some of these can be fatal. <laughs> Thank you, good luck. <laughs> Consult your doctor. Good luck. <laughs> Catheters. Oh, they're grotesque. That's it. You catheters, diabetes medications. You have just wiped out 90% of the Fox News advertising. <laughs> it sells itself. I would love to be an ad executive there. Yeah, I got to just, you know, I got Lantis on redial. That's it. Catheters. <laughs> or, then, or cholesterol medication, of course. <laughs> and and the, the, the craziest, most racist commercial in this politically correct time. Politi- where I fucking, you know, the, 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 I, I drool the word fag under my breath at a Cincinnati funny bone one night at one o'clock in the morning and I can't get a fucking beer commercial. Because some dickhead with a smartphone has that on tape. But this commercial gets by. It, it's Crestor. Crestor is a... Uh, it's for, what was it, high cholesterol, maybe? Uh, it's either high cholesterol or high blood pressure. I think it's high blood pressure. By the way, the depressing thing is I'm 48. I use everything they have. <laughs> I'm 48. I'm their target. I'm their dream guy because I'll keep going. I, I'm at a point in my life where my life is moving very fast. And I don't know if, if something's going to come that I'm going to hit. I don't know. Um, you know, I'm, I'm at another point in my life where I'm single. I am. It's rock and roll, man. I, I'm doing stand up. I'm out on the road. I'm writing creative you know it's, it's, it's fun it's rock and roll I'm moving along but it's it's one of those things where something's something gonna happen or what I might wake up one morning and I I go what do I feel on my neck cut to my wake <laughs> I wake up one morning at, at, at a Radisson in Appleton Wisconsin <laughs> okay 60 grand for a theater not bad I'm not gonna lie to you uh, I wake up one day at the Radisson I, yeah, maybe I'll see if the Dan and Tim are going to get the continental breakfast. <laughs> I get up and I go, what is that? What do I feel on my neck? <laughs> Smash cut to my wake. Two weeks later. Uh, this is it. It'll be, this is the movie. What's that on my neck? Cut to Dan going, Miss, Mrs. Lang, it's very, it's very difficult. It's difficult for me. Oh, please. It's difficult for me, too. <laughs> I, this is a very awkward time, but it, did, did you read the will? He told he was, he might have been drunk, but he did tell me no. <laughs> Apparently, there's a there's a gold there's a watch or something. <laughs> <laughs> what did? What are you bringing up right now? He left me the curved TV. I'm sorry, Mrs. Lang. <laughs> I know it's very difficult. <laughs> but um, yeah, you know, Artie again was not the most efficient. He wasn't the most efficient guy. He didn't really have his ducks in a row. <laughs> He did tell me after we get back from the Radisson in Wisconsin, I'll, I'll, I'll figure this out. It's kind of important. No, <laughs> I'm not being greedy. I don't want the because basically, even if I get the watch, I, it, it costs me money. The, the relationship already cost me money. <laughs> oh, I'm glad we can laugh about it now. Timmy goes, uh, I don't know what Dan was talking about. <laughs> I kind of have the same. Is it a bad time? Well, here's the thing. I'm, I really, I want to take this CrossFit uh, trip. <laughs> what, Timmy? What? My son is dead. I know, but listen. I, I don't mean I, you're right. It's a bad time, but honestly, Artie wasn't so really efficient. His ducks weren't in a row. There's, 
Uh, he did pro did you, did you read the will? He Dan asked the same call, oh my God. Well listen. There's a it's there's, look, there's a crossroads in my life. If I do this, I could probably get if I do this, this gym in uh, Provo, Utah will make me their life coach. <laughs> I moved to Provo. It's a big deal. Tim, please leave. Okay, I'll call you about it. Can I call you about it? Yeah, I mean, take the day, though. Because really, I know. It's really hard not having Artie around. <laughs> he did so much. Uh, oh, shit. Uh, Why is it up? Can we get duct tape for this? There we go. I know, Dan. Wirefuls out there and just looks at it. It's like the fifty eighth time a guy's on a wirefall out there as a producer. I put it back in. He goes, "There we go." <laughs> <laughs> he sees me struggling with the tape. Freddie Decord him over there. I, I gotta get there. We go. Thanks, Tim. <laughs> Tim leaves. Cut to every girlfriend I've had for the last thirty years. <laughs> Who are you? I dated Artie in nineteen ninety two. What the at the port yeah and my English got better <laughs> yeah well he was gonna marry me for a it was a long story another like guy anyway one time we were uh, he was uh, I was giving him a blowjob on the turnpike by exit 8 a.m. and he just he, let's, he, he was very sensitive and he said uh, if I ever get rich you're in my will <laughs> he, said, he said that before I blew him <laughs> it's actually the reason I blew him <laughs> so it wasn't a lot if I, I'm so late for you ever get. Whoa, who are you? Please leave. My son is dead. Uh, okay. Do you know what he meant to meant to Gunner and Rick in LA and Steve Torelli? <laughs> Steve Torelli shows up. Uh, Miss Lyon. <laughs> I'm, I'm Steve Torelli. You might know him from Twitter. I'm a big fan. Yeah, Artie was uh, at a gig and he. He really was happy that I spent money on his books and everything. He said, God, I owe you money. You're such a good fan. I, I, he seemed drunk, but he did leave me $50,000. <laughs> did, uh, did you read the will? Get out of Who are you? Steve Torelli? <laughs> My son is dead. I know. Do you mind if we take a picture right near the body? <laughs> Just real quick. A selfie. <laughs> a selfie. <laughs> You want a selfie? <laughs> Stacy, what is that? What's a selfie? <laughs> Stacy just Stacy hits the kid in the face with a bat. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you, sis. Do me a favor, Stacy. Hit Dan and Tim with a bat. Yeah. And the dogs are running around. <laughs> the the Brussels Griffin is on Artie. Uh, when, uh, listen, guys, I got news for you. We're joking around here. I just stopped in my tracks. <laughs> That scene, eventually, <laughs> eventually something will take my life. And I doubt, you know, I'll be the last to go. <laughs> At my wake, do not, Stace, I know you love those dogs. Do, I don't, if, if I'm, oh, if I'm, if I have to spend, oh. if I have to spend eternity with Vinny the Brussels <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Oh. God's getting me back. Not Vinny. Uh, by the way, I'm watching Fox right now. <laughs> Catheter. <laughs> no, anyway, so the I got a, you know, I got I got a glimpse. I gotta go. A glimpse. Of the, how long have we been talking? We. <laughs> Fifty two minutes. Okay. You know what I'm doing right now? I'm about to go to a Rush, a Rush <laughs> Eve, great comic. Uh, me, Dave Attell, and Dave Juskow are taking Rush Eve out for his birthday. <laughs> They leave me to do the planning. <laughs> I'm like, how the fuck did this happen? It's Russ's birthday, and Attell goes to me, well, what do you want to do? I go, I know of an Italian restaurant. He goes, okay, well, uh, make the plans. Let me know. Oh, wait a minute. What? <laughs> I said, I know an Italian joint. <laughs> what, what are we playing? What are we fucking the view? Make plans. <laughs> what, what, am I, what am I, on the set of the talk? <laughs> Organized? I've never done this. I got, here's the email from Dave Attell at 4 a.m. on Saturday. <laughs> Artie really needs to get on this uh Ritz, Russ Eve birthday dinner. Okay. What's happening? Really needs, really needs <laughs> to get on this. <laughs> it's fucking four guys going to dinner. They got a steak. <laughs> what, 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 what am I, the new fucking uh, uh, set decorator for uh, uh, best time ever with Neil Patrick Harris? <laughs> Did you imagine, imagine that guy's day? Oh, my God. 
Neil, Neil, listen, it's the, it's the new set of writer. Neil, how you doing? But yeah, uh, we have not confirmed the pogo stick guy. Now you do want that. You do think that's the best time ever, really? Our emails and our, our research indicates in, indicates that a lot of people don't have a pogo guy at their best time ever. Oh, he's got to get on this. You think Dave's a little fucking uh, erotic? At 4 a.m. 4 a.m. 4 a.m. <laughs> he, he's probably he's at a Marriott in St. Louis. That's what he's thinking of. <laughs> what, did the whore leave? <laughs> that, that's 4 a.m. What the fuck? He's a 52-year-old man. And he's on my VIP list, so it made a sound. Uh, yeah. He is? <laughs> yeah. You have a VIP list? Well, on the phone. He's got to be the only straight guy. Right? <laughs> oh. oh, my God. You're on the VIP list. Yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> well, I'm your boss. <laughs> uh, Yours is the only one that makes that. I got I to gotta moan. I got to moan from a crowd. These crowds are getting more and more politically correct. I'm, I'm, I'm going to hit one of these kids with a bat. And stand <laughs> me. That's, uh, that's what's going to happen to me. That's how I'm going to go away. <laughs> what, what the, if a, a guy under 35 years old moans at something, I say, what would make you moan? Are, could guys become bigger pussies? Pussies! I call Bruce Jenner, Caitlyn Jenner. A, a 25-year-old guy goes, ooh. Oh, God. What the fuck did you just say ooh for? Nothing could get me to say ooh when I was 25. Nothing. There's nothing that could offend me. Nothing. Nada. I accidentally called the fucking guy who won the decathlon in 1976. By mistake, I didn't call that guy Caitlin. <laughs> and this fruit in the fucking 25 from millennial fruit. Go, ooh. Fuckhead. Get out. <laughs> Leave. I'll pay your bill. Because I know it's hard for millennials to get work. <laughs> You're competing with the nerds at MIT. Go build an app and shut the fuck up. They're all wearing fucking $84 sweaters their father bought them. <laughs> Assholes. <laughs> Guys moaning, I realize uh, their parents are paying for this night. Excuse me, Artie, uh, don't say Caitlyn Jenner. We're in our safe space. <laughs> and uh, one of us was once... <laughs> One of us was pen pals with a transgender person once. Really? I'm gonna I'm gonna punch you in the face. Step outside. I'm gonna punch you in the face. Ooh, this joke got a new. I, I said yeah, uh, the the El Chapo El Chapo <laughs> picture with uh, uh, Spicoli, Sean Penn and El Chapo the <laughs> drug lord in a picture. Greatest greatest picture ever. I'm thinking about making it my screensaver. <laughs> I saw it up by going, you know, it looks like Sean Penn agreed to be the best man at his gardener's wedding. Okay, kind of hacky, but you get into the bit. You know, that gets, I'm like, wait, okay. They're and I said, uh, you know, that shirt, look at that shirt. I mean, that guy looks like he can get your Coke. All right, whatever. I go, there's two things. There's two things uh, about a person that to me indicate they might be able to get your Coke. Uh, and El Chapo has both of them. <laughs> One is he owns that shirt. Two is his first name is L. <laughs> <laughs> E-L If E-L is in your name And you have that shirt I don't want to offend you But I'm probably going to ask you If you can get cocaine <laughs> And I assume the answer would be Oh yeah I got a house made out of it I got a fucking bathroom Made out of cocaine <laughs> Just hit the drywall You get three eight poles come out If he comes to Brooklyn Are we going to the courtroom Let me be, let me be silent for your joke too <laughs> Great job Great job uh, are they uh, bringing El Chapo here? That's what they're saying. Uh, uh, listen, I'm going to treat him like it's the Pope. <laughs> you know how many people got excited for the Pope? Uh, that's how we're going to cover it. This podcast is going to cover El Chapo coming here like every like CNN covered the Pope. There is El Chapo. He's here. He just touched the he touched the head of a boy, and he broke the boy's neck. Apparently, that's the son of someone who owes him money. <laughs> El Chapo is walking over the sick. Wait a minute. El Chapo is walking over to the sick child, and this is very, like much like the Pope. He's walking over to the sick child, a sick Hispanic child. Unbelievable. El Chapo is touching the child, and El Chapo has pulled out a gun and shot the child in the face. Apparently, that was the son of someone who was one. The father, we're getting this, wait a minute. The father did rip off El Chapo. And anyway, he's walking over to another boy, another boy, and he walks up and he's, oh, wait, this is better. He's, wait, he snapped the boy's neck. 
El Chapo just snacked the three. We thought he was going to try to heal the boy like the Pope. Instead, El Chapo snapped the boy's neck. And we are getting, what are we getting? Yeah, oh, apparently the boy's mother uh, was constipated and couldn't shit out a heroin balloon for him. Oh, God. And El Chapo claims he got her kale and was very patient. <laughs> yeah, if he comes, that's what we're dreaming. El Chapo. And he'll be in a bulletproof car. <laughs> Better than the Pope's. Yeah, so I say, you first, you got L, E L. I did it the other night, especially I destroyed in Jersey. I, yeah, I go to the Greenwich Village Club with people a little more sophisticated, I guess. They come from the safe place. <laughs> Daddy's buying their drinks. <laughs> Moon, ooh. You know, you know why they they, they got mad that I um, I pointed out that every once in a great while, every once in a, like when Haley's comet the shoots by, there might be an Hispanic man in the cocaine business. <laughs> you fucking fags. Uh, I don't know how to do anything else. I would leave this business. I really would. I would leave. I would. Right now, I'd be gone. I'd be saying the same shit but to my friend in a diner. <laughs> a triple! <laughs> yeah, so I, that's, I gotta get going. I don't wanna be late. Listen, to Artie's got to get on this thing. <laughs> Artie's got to get on. How dare I? I mean, you know what? Like, I, 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 print, print that out. Print that out. I'm going to read it. I'm going to start off the dinner by reading that. When everybody gets there, I'm going to read Dave's email to the table. And uh, then say to Dave, you've got to lighten up. Something has to happen. We're all pushing for it. David Tell a genius, an absolute genius. Because um, me and him did, me did every once in a while at the comedy cellar, we, me, him, and Jeff Ross go on stage and we stand at like 3 a.m. busting balls. And we, we, it was just me and Dave the other night. We had so much fucking fun. I do. I live for that. That's all I live for is to stand up and bullshit with funny people I know because I'm a comic. That's it. When this is taken away from me, I'll have nothing. <laughs> Cut to me and I'll chop. So I'm going to leave and go have dinner. I have to get on this. And, uh, Thanks, but we already quit our podcast. Uh, Dad, thanks for booking the show tonight. Brian Jones not available. And uh, he's doing a pilot. What's going on tomorrow? He's doing a pilot. What's her name? <laughs> well, what uh, is there anybody tomorrow? Uh, I don't know yet. Well, who's coming in? I don't know yet. You don't even know the regular people? No, because I pattern it for whoever we try to get on. You, I th- what are you talking about? I don't understand pattern for what? Well, you know. What? What are if you talking I, no, about? If I don't say it, what? No, I try to pattern it. You know, like on sixty minutes. What? For what? I I I don't know who's coming in yet. <laughs> pattern it for what? A guest? Yeah, if we have a guest. Why are you being so cryptic? What are you talking about? No, I'm not about? being cryptic. Oh, let's just stop talking. What the fuck is that? Oh, that was Paul Morrissey. <laughs> He's coming in on Thursday. <laughs> oh, good man, Dan working hard on the recruiting. <laughs> Booking, Paul Morrissey. It's gonna be a lot of shows. Try to get Paul, <laughs> and as of, uh, exclusively on uh, speed dial. <laughs> All right, that's it. He was the only one that cared for me in the elevator. Well, nerd draft. <laughs> no, he didn't care. He was laughing. <laughs> Dan, we forgot to talk about. Dan was in the elevator. We'll, we'll talk about. It. I forgot about. It. Dan was in the elevator, trapped. Greatest text ever. I already stand up in the elevator. I'm tired. <laughs> I couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> the gay fireman joke. Because the fireman had a fireman shaped in. <laughs> I'm fine. And Dan does his gay fireman pickup line, which is like, can I, can I get a mask? Like, there's no smoke. He goes, and Dan goes, yeah, but you're smoking. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Go to artiequitter.com. I love you all. This has been the Artie Quitter Podcast.